historic Lambeau Field in the heart of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Every seat filled today for the renewal of one of the oldest and most bitter rivalries in all of sports, the Chicago Bears against the Green Bay Packers. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, and welcome to Green Bay for the 140th meeting between the Bears and the Packers. These two teams first teated up in 1921 when Warren G. Harding was in the White House. The Packers were the Packers, but the Bears were then known as the Decatur Staleys. It's my pleasure to work with Dan Fouts this year. Dan, both teams off to impressive starts last week, particularly the Bears on defense. Well, that's the, really the key for the Bears is defense. Last year, 25th in the, in the league. Now with Dan Hampton healthy, rotating with William Perry and Steve McMichael, the Bears are back. Outstanding preseason last week against Seattle. Shut them down and shut them out. The Packers defeated the Rams last week with Anthony Dillwig at quarterback, and he has earned a second start. Well, he really has NFC Player of the Week last week. Uh, he said before that game he had nothing to lose, but it's a different story this week. He has everything to lose because he could lose his starting job. But that's pressure, and that's what this rivalry is all about. This is in-your-face football, and two better faces, the mouth of Tim Harris and the eyes of Mike Singletary. We have been blessed with perfect football weather here in September. The first serious hint of fall, 54 degrees. Green Bay won the toss. That means Kevin Butler will kick off. Vince Workman and Charles Wilson are deep. This will be the rookie Charles Wilson at the five. Back to the 20. And knocked down as he gets near the 22-yard line. Anthony Dillwig, the NFC Offensive Player of the Week for his performance last week in the win over Los Angeles. He'll get the start today. The second-year man out of Duke, a third-round draft choice, and he is joined offensively on the Green Bay front line by Rutgers, Billy R., James Campton, Keith Euchre, Tony Mandarich, and Ed West. And the backfield, Woodside, and a surprise, Brent Fullwood sits down, Michael Haddix gets the start, Perry Kemp and Sterling Sharp join him. They open from the I formation, and Perry Kemp comes in tight to the left. First down from the 22. The handoff goes to Keith Woodside, and he gets just a couple before William Perry makes the tackle. Defensively for Chicago, it's Trace Armstrong, Perry, Dan Hampton, and Richard Dent. Steve McMichael will rotate in and out. Rivera, Singletary, and Morrissey in the linebackers. And the secondary, they played very well last week. Danelle Wolford, Lemuel Stinson, Mark Carrier, and Sean Gale. Second down and nine after a gain of one. Backs are split. Now Woodside goes wide to the left or the right side. And Sterling Sharp is split wide left. Haddock's out of the backfield. Straight drop back to Dillwig. Batted down. Well, the old man in the front line, Dan Hampton, number 99, is going to make this play. The Packers come with nobody in the backfield. Watch Hampton get his right hand up and knock this one away. Shows he still has a little spring in those old knees of his. Dan Hampton with 10 knee operations now. This he's, team. he's in a perfect mood for this game, especially after the comments made about him last week. He is in a very nasty mood. Well, we'll follow up on that because uh, Dan Fouts had a chance to chat with Dan Hampton in the locker room about an hour ago. Third and nine. This is the Royal Flush step. Bill Wick, no time. He's sacked, and there's also a flag. No doubt offensive holding, which will be declined. The referee today is Dale Hamer. This might be tripping instead of holding. At any rate, against the Packers. Tripping, number 67 for the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Penalty is on Billy Ard. Lindy and funny in his third year now as head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Don Bracken is on to punt, and Johnny Bailey will return them. Bailey was an adventure back there last week. He can really scat. He's from Texas A&I. He bobbled a couple. Actually fumbled one. Here's Bracken's punt. Not necessarily a good one. Into the wind. And a fair catch called by Johnny Bailey, which will give Chicago excellent field position at the 47-yard line, a 33-yard punt. Jim Harbaugh is the starting quarterback. Very conservative game plan for Harbaugh last week in the win over Seattle. 
but he was most effective and he is joined on offense up front by the same line that started the 85 Super Bowl Covert Ports, Hilkenberg, Thayer, Van Horn James Thornton the tight end Anderson Muster, Wendell Davis and Ron Morris the wide receivers Packers showing a blitz on first down play fake Harbaugh goes deep on first down and it's right into the hands of Jerry Holmes he overthrew Thornton and Jerry Holmes has the ball at the 37 yard line Well, the Packers confused Harbaugh with this fake blitz look. He was expecting man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary, and even if he had it, he had overthrown Thornton by so much that Holmes in the his zone is there for the interception. But what a pickup for the, the Packers to pick up Jerry Holmes uh, by Plan B from Detroit. Another successful Plan B acquisition for Green Bay. Hank Buller, the defensive coordinator, told us last night, I'm very happy with the play of Jerry Holmes. Well, he should be. First and ten. Holmes with his first interception of the season. Now Dillwig, hand off to Haddix. And that one is stuffed after a gain of one by Richard Dent. There's Jerry Holmes. Been around the league a while. Well, he's 32 years old, and, and uh, the Packers, the guy he's replacing is Dave Brown, who uh, he may be 38 or 39. He's, he's in that Satchel Page range of age. How old would, would you be if you didn't know how old you was? <laughs> Second down and nine. There's Jim Harbaugh getting a bit of conversation from Mike Ditka. And that won't be the last either. If he throws the ball like that. Jeff Query has come in, number 85, at wide receiver for the backers. Second and nine. On the roll. Here's Dillwig. Nice pass. Sterling Sharp. And that's a first down at the 49. Dillwig right on the line, a gain of 14. Dillwig is probably a better scrambler or at least a thrower on the run that people give him credit for. Watch how the control he has. No pressure at all. Singletary's late, and Sharp finds another hole in the zone of the Bears. And the Packers, with that interception, have turned the field position in their favor. You see the receptions last year for Sharp. Last week against the Rams, they rolled the zone up on him, and he was held to only two catches. First and ten now, Green Bay. No score. Twelve minutes to go, first quarter. Hand off to Michael Hannis. Surges over the right tackle spot. The block supplied by Mandarich and Euchre. And let's look at the eyes of Michael Haddocks. The important thing is he does is he keeps his eyes straight ahead until he gets the ball, and now he's got to find a, a running lane there. It goes right by Perry, but with that big left arm of William Perry's, he's got enough strength to bring him down, but not before a nice eight-yard gain. Attucks, another plan B acquisition, a one-time first-round draft choice to the Philadelphia Eagles, a gain of six, second and four from the 42. Now Sharp comes to the left side. They will move him around a lot today, trying to free him up with different sets. Here's Haddix again, and he's knocked down at the 40-yard line. Tackle made by William Perry. It'll be third and two. Perry has really gotten himself into probably the best shape he's been in in the last three or four years. In fact, uh, on Monday and Tuesday, when the Bears have off and, and have a very light day on Monday, William Perry was working the Stairmaster, trying to increase his, uh, dur his endurance. Perry now listed at 320 pounds. He's got a few more stairs to climb. <laughs> Third and one. Backs in the eye. Haddix. That's going to be close for the first down at the 39-yard line. Now again, we were told by the uh, Packer officials, the Public Relations Department, that the Michael Haddock's start for Fullwood was not injury related, simply a last minute decision. This is short of the first down. And a decision now, if it is indeed short, for Lindy and Funny. Fullwood is entering the game, and the backers wait now as if Funny watches the chain being brought out. I think Green Bay requested the measurement which is their right 
Well, what it does is it gives Infani a, an idea of just how far they want to go, and that may affect what type of play he will call if, in fact, he does elect to go for it on fourth down. That much. Let's watch William Perry on defense. Well, when you're this big, this is the best play to make, is just to try to stay low and be as big as possible and get in on another tackle. So far, Perry is, uh, has been in on about three or four of them. Well, it'll be fourth and a foot, and already in this game, the Green Bay Packers have gotten farther into Chicago territory than Seattle did all last week. Oh, boy, forward. As Mike Singletary took a bead on Fullwood and just missed him. Singletary guessed, Dan, and he guessed right, but he just missed the tackle. Well, there is nothing wrong with Brent Fullwood. Watch Singletary come from the left side here as he reads the play but cannot make the tackle. Right there, break, uh, Fullwood with the breaking of the arm tackle, covering the ball up well, picks up about five yards and a Packer first down, but Mike Singletary won't miss that tackle very often. Rams with an early lead over Tampa Bay. They lost here last week. Cleveland and the Jets are tied, and Philadelphia leads Phoenix. No score in this game. First down at the 35-yard line. Dilwick, nice fake by Anthony Dilwick. The comeback screen to Keith Woodside, who slips and scampers down to the 25. Recognize that play? Well, Dilwick is an excellent faker, and he fakes out Lemuel Stinson, number 32. Watch as he bites the fake, and if Dilwick doesn't see... Boy, he does not see a sure touchdown right here to Sterling Sharp. And you know one thing, that Sterling went right back to the huddle. And the coaches upstairs here in the press box, they're on the phones saying, hey, listen, I think we got somebody who's peaking in that secondary. And his number is 32. And the old Stinson promised Green, uh, Chicago fans he would get two interceptions today. He had one last week. Back split, there's comes the blitz. And that pass thrown away as Woodside was the intended receiver or Sharp. And uh, both were short of the pass. The important thing for Dilwig now is not to force the ball and, and cause some type of interception. The Bears are in field goal range, although they will be kicking into a pretty stiff breeze. But the important thing is to get on the board early and have the Bears chase the Packers. See Blair Keel flashing in the signals. He and Mikowski and Dilwig make up their own signals. So there's a shorthand between the three quarterbacks. One of those two is live, but in actuality, it's Keel more than it is Mikowski, who's the actual man sending in the signals. Second down and 10. No score. Inside handoff. Woodside. He's got sharp downfield. First and goal. Just inside the 10. Keith Woodside. Misdirection play here for the Packers as uh, good block by Jackie Harris springs Woodside and now it's just pure speed as he's into the secondary and the Packers are putting together a pretty nice drive very important after a turnover to take the ball down and pay off your defense by scoring whether it's a field goal or a touchdown that was a gain of 14 for Keith Woodside it's first and goal at the 10 just inside backs in the eye again Woodside, touchdown. Touchdown, Green Bay. Well, what an unexpected key participant in the drive. Keith Woodside, who was used more as a wide receiver than a running back in this offense. But the thing that Lindy likes about him is his versatility. Here he is as the eye back with the straight ahead blast play with good vision to cut it back to the weak side. The Bears plug it up over the middle, but Woodside with enough speed and vision gets in for the six. Chris Jackie will tack on the extra point. Flag is down. Kick is good if the play stands. Woodside with no yards rushing in last week's win over Los Angeles. And an official's timeout. Dale Hamer, the referee.
And we are told they are reviewing it. Well, that's the perfect way for this ball game to get started because <laughs> the last two last time these two got together here in Green Bay back in November, that's the way it ended when Mikowski threw to Sharp in a very controversial play that uh, the replay booth overruled the officials on the field. But this clearly, it appeared, was a touchdown. And uh, we'll see how long this baby takes for them to figure it out. I've got my hourglass up here, Vern, and I've just turned it over. Take a look at it from about the nine and a half yard line. See if his knee goes down. He does knock down a referee, but uh, he was well inside the end zone when his knee touched. Jack Fetty is the replay official. But Mark Carrier gets a taste of the NFL right in his face as he uh, is not strong enough to hold back Woodside there's his knee down but did he break the plane of the end zone before apparently so touchdown Dale Hamer just indicating that the play will stand and now we'll try the extra point and a seemingly unconcerned Mike Ditka with Vince Tobin his defensive coordinator prowling right behind him Don Bracken will hold Chris Jackie will put up the point it's good so a Jerry Holmes interception leads to a drive highlighted by the running of Keith Woodside, who got the touchdown and gives Green Bay the lead. 7-0 with 7.36 to go first quarter. Green Bay has taken the lead after the Jerry Holmes interception. Ten plays. Keith Woodside has 26 yards. He got the touchdown from 10 yards out, and they chewed up nearly six minutes in that drive. Now Chris Jackie will kick it deep. Dennis Gentry and the rookie Johnny Bailey wait for the kickoff at the five-yard line. Jackie kicking into the breeze, which is out of the north today. And held up by the breeze, taken short by James Rouse. Rookie fullback from Arkansas, and he gets it out to the 30-yard line. So Jim Harbaugh who was intercepted on his first pass of the game, he is back on the field. Yeah, and that's not the type of way to start if you're a Chicago Bear quarterback because uh, Dick is not afraid to put in the second string guy, or in this case, Mike Tomczak. Time has been called on the field, 7-0. The Green Bay Packers lead the Chicago Bears. On the left is Greg Landry, who Mike Ditka said yesterday will call the plays today. Greg, the offensive coordinator, and the victim of viral encephalitis about a month ago, a very serious illness that almost cost him his life. But That's really fine. good to see him back on the sidelines and back in the swing of things. Uh, probably not too happy about that first play he called, though. First down and 10. And off the Anderson. Tripped up and dropped. Brian Noble who led this team in tackles last week in the win over L.A. And Noble is playing with a bad shoulder, had a pinched nerve last week against the Rams. But watch the intensity of Brian Noble. He's not the, uh, Mike Singletary is not the only linebacker with big eyes. Fighting off the block of Thayer, just getting enough of Anderson for the loss. Harris, Brian, Noble, Lester Archambault has come in, and this time Tim Harris, the pass rush specialist, lines up on the left side. Back split on second down. Inside handoff. Muster breaks into the secondary and surges across the 40 near the first down. Well, the offensive line of the Bears really cut fires off the ball well here. Nice job of Thayer with a combination block and then the strength of Muster pulling away from Johnny Holland picking up the first down. Mark Murphy by the way has come out of the defensive backfield for the Packers and Tiger Green has been joined by Jerry Woods. We'll check and see if that's injury related. First down and 10 after the gain of 13. Anderson. Brian Noble again. Two fine plays. You get the feeling that after uh, the interception that Ditka wants the ball on the ground and he wants them running it. A couple of uh, fine plays by Brian Noble. 
This is the kind of game that uh, linebackers and offensive linemen have got to love. They know where the ball is going to be 90% of the time today, and it's going to be right in their face. See what Green Bay has in mind defensively now. Jim Harbaugh told us last night their blitz down is second down between six and nine yards, and this is second and nine. They're not showing the blitz now. Here they come. Here comes Noble. And there is the blitz. And Scott Steven gives way to Neil Anderson, who fires right by him. So they blitz on the run, and Anderson makes them pay the price. The thought behind blitzing on second and long is to get uh, a sack, number one, if they are throwing the ball and bringing up that third and real long where you can sit back in a zone and look for interceptions. But the Bears primarily are a running team, and with Neil Anderson, he's probably the best overall all around back in the entire league. It'll be third and two officially. 7 nothing, 440 to go, first quarter. Muster, first down, Chicago. As they cross into Green Bay territory for the first time. Grab Muster, who had the offseason back surgery. Really good news for all Bear fans to see Muster healthy and running the ball well. Last week, his very first carry uh, picked up a bunch of yards and knocked out the guy trying to tackle him. But when he gets low like that, at six foot three and over 230 pounds, he is very difficult to stop. First and ten. Back split behind Harbaugh. Anderson. Oh, boy. Brian Noble again. Well, do you think that Brian Noble knows Neil Anderson? I know Neil Anderson knows Brian Noble. That's right in his chest there. One Brian. thing that uh, running backs hate to do is to get up in the air and to come down on their back. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Three fine tackles by Brian Noble, second and nine. 3.14 to go first quarter. Anderson comes right. Blitz coming from Noble. Brian Noble on Brad Muster. We talked about second and long being a blitz down for the Packers. Here comes Noble straight up, right up the middle, and nobody there to pick him up except Muster. And Brian Noble's going after a world record here in the first quarter. He's a one-time fifth-round draft choice and not what you would call one of the more widely heralded linebackers in the NFL. But what a performance here in the first quarter. Now three wide receivers come to the near side on third and nine. Dennis Gentry goes in motion. Out of the shotgun. Four-man rush. Harbaugh rolls right. Good coverage. Tim Harris sacked him. And here come the six guns. There's a real mismatch there as he fights off the block of Gentry and then the speed of Tim Harris chasing Harbaugh down from behind and things are working right into Hank Bulla, the defensive coordinator's hands for the Packers. Second sack of the season for Tim Harris who had 19 and a half last year. Jeff Query back to return the punt on fourth down. Here's Maury Buford. Fair catch. Whoa! Bobble! And Query uh, caused a few hearts to stop. First down at the four-yard line. Green Bay with a fine defensive stand. They lead Chicago by seven. Breezy day in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We're at Lambeau Field where the Packers are hosting the Chicago Bears. They lead it 7-0 on a Keith Woodside touchdown run. 1.41 to go. Quarter number one, Vern Lundquist and Dan Fouts. And now after the bobbled punt return by Jeff Query, Green Bay with a first and ten at their own four. Steve McMichael has replaced Dan Hampton. 
and William Perry has moved over to the right tackle. From the end zone, caught by Woodside out near the eighth. That's a gain of four yards. Woodside, who has been a key ingredient of the offense early on now for Green Bay, tackled made by Mark Carrier. You talked about that, Breeze, Vern, and, and this is really going to factor in here. Field position was so much a part of the Bears' win last week against Seattle. Uh, good punting by Maury Buford, good kick coverage, kept the Seahawks pinned back. So far, the, the Bears have uh, pinned back the Packers, except for the one interception that turned it around. See Steve McMichael in there, number 76, after a long holdout. Signed late. Now Singletary threatening the blitz. He's coming. Bill Wagon roll, chased by Singletary. Fires to Sterling Sharp. Cut! Oh, what a dandy grab! Well, Sharp already has as many catches today as he had all last week. And this is why he caught 90 last year and made the Pro Bowl. This is a Pro Bowl catch. The feet on the sidelines, the tippy toes in the first down. That's a gain of 17, first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Sterling Sharp, who said he thought that route adjustments were more important in success as a wide receiver than pure speed, changing your routes on every, every play. Here's Dillwig back. Fumble! Picked up by the Packers. That'll be a loss. Trace Armstrong got there, number 93. Well, and the guy that was supposed to block Trace Armstrong is Tony Mandrich, or as Bozo, as uh, Mike Ditka likes to call him. Number 77 in the middle of the screen there is working on Armstrong, number 93. And Armstrong, with the rip under, just gets right by him. And Mandrich can't even hold him out long enough for Dillwig to get the ball off. Big play for the Bears. Mandrich gave way to Armstrong and then saved the football. That's the end of the first quarter with our score. The Green Bay Packers 7 and the Chicago Bears 7. We start the second quarter 7-0 Green Bay leading it. They really have had their way so, thus far. Well, they have. Of course, the big play is the interception by Jerry Holmes, but they paid it off. They went down, and Keith Woodside did an outstanding job getting in the end zone. So 7 nothing. the uh, Packers leading now. Just had a big sack, though, from Trace Armstrong. And it's second down at 22. Right side. Oh, boy. Will Stimson with good coverage on Perry Kemp. That's as close as you can cover him. Stinson last week uh, got into the prediction business by saying you know, that he'd pick off a couple and that the Bear secondary would get a bunch. And uh, he came to be right on a couple of those. Uh, but whether he gets any this week or not uh, remains to be seen. But he has done an outstanding job, beat out Vesty Jackson for that starting cornerback position and had tremendously close coverage on Perry Kemp that time. Well, to be precise, he predicted two for himself and five for the team today. Now third and 22. Morrissey, the lone linebacker, six DBs in, five-man rush. Dillwig across the middle, knocked down. Donnell Wolford. And it'll be fourth down and 22. Well, the big play in this drive was the uh, forced fumble by Trace Armstrong. And that forced the Packers into an obvious long passing situation. And the Bears this year rely on their front four to get pressure on the quarterback. That allows them to drop seven people and play in the zones as Wolford there almost came up with a pick. Don Bracken will have this stiff breeze behind him now. Johnny Bailey waits for it at the 40-yard line. Bracken, who almost lost his job in preseason to Dale Hatcher. That is returnable. Bailey at the 37. Nears the 45 and is down at the 47-yard line. Tackle made by Brian Noble, number 91. That's a 50-yard punt. Nine on the return. Ken Rutgers and Tony Mandridge and James Campen look on. Mike Ditka looks on, his team with good field position now at the 47-yard line, first down and 10. They trail 7-0, Jim Harbaugh 
through a pass interception on the first offensive play of the game for the Bears. Has not thrown one since. James Thornton sets up tight to the right, and Neil Anderson splits out wide to the left. Now Bob Nelson cocks the defensive nose tackle and takes an angle. Here's Harbaugh. Caught by Wendell Davis, and he cuts inside to the 43-yard line. Coming up next on this CBS doubleheader, most of you around the country will see the Washington Redskins against the 49ers. Others will watch the Giants at Dallas and still others, New Orleans at Minnesota. But the key matchup of the day, I think, that Washington-San Francisco game. Redskins looked awfully good last week, and the 49ers had a tough battle down in New Orleans. Well, they really did. The 49ers are talking about it being another slow start for them as they started slowly last year. We all know how they re fixed it up and got it going at 14 and 2, but that should be a good one, especially Mark Rippon seems to be hot. That'll be the second game of the doubleheader. Here's the measurement to see if Wendell Davis got the first down, and he's a couple of links of the chain short. Greg Landry, Johnny Rowland with a cap on backwards, the running back coach, and in Landry's illness, it was Johnny Rowland who called the plays. And Jim Harbaugh thought they might have relied more on the running back to, uh, while Landry was out because <laughs> Rowland was a running back. And a great one at that. He's got the Joe Walton look there on the sidelines. James Rouse in at fullback now for the Bears. Number 30, the rookie from Arkansas. Second. Less than a foot. Ron Morris, the motion man. Here's the blitz. Anderson picks up the first down at the 43-yard line. Rams increase their lead in the heat in Tampa Bay, 14-0. That's a banged-up football team right now. Atlanta and Detroit are tied at seven. And Bruce Coslett's team over the Cleveland Browns, 14-7. Miami leading Buffalo, 7-0. Thirteen thirty-two to go, first half. First and ten, Chicago. They trail seven nothing. Thornton splits out wide to the right. Delay of game. Now the Bears had all kinds of things going there. They shifted Thornton way out to the outside and then tried to put the back in motion took too long delay of game number four of the offense five yard penalty still first down they always blame that one on the quarterback too you know for the delay of game they always say number four or whatever mm -hmm. that's really a team effort <laughs> are you trying to absolve yourself of any responsibility is that i think it's too late for that <laughs> seven nothing green bay 13 07 to go first half Back split on first and 15. And again, Bob Nelson takes an angle at nose tackle. Harbaugh deep in the middle. Thornton, nice pass. First down at the 23. Mark Murphy with the tackle. Let's check on it. Atlanta and Detroit. Back to New York. Here's Greg Gumbel. All right, Vern, you saw the 7-7 tie. Here's how the Falcons pulled even. Chris Miller from 10 yards out finds Andre Risen in the end zone for the touchdown. They have gone to the second quarter at the Silverdome, tied at 7. Back to Vernon Dan in Green Bay. All right, Greg, 23-yard gain on first down and 15. Harbaugh to James Thornton, first down. Chicago, kind of a cock tie now in the backfield. That would look nasty at the outset, man. I think our center, Jay Hilgenberg, was a little bit late. Might have forgot what the snap count was because there were 10 guys moving and only one guy, unfortunately for the Bears, the guy with the ball wasn't moving. Ball start. The entire offensive line. <laughs> Five-yard penalty. Hilgenberg loves that. <laughs> yeah, watch everybody move, but the ball doesn't. Hut one, hut two, hut three. We had so much fun last night talking with Mark Bortz and Tom Thayer. Dan asked the two of them, who's the smartest player in the offensive line? And they said, Hilgenberg. And then you said, who's the stupidest? <laughs> and they said Hilgenberg because he's from a football family. That's how he got his smarts, but he should be smart enough to get out of the game. First and 15. 7-0. Green Bay leads it. 
Draw play. Neil Anderson. Nowhere to run. Harris and Murphy and Nelson all a part of the defensive job. Well, the Packers are putting great pressure on up front. And again, it's a, a first and long situation, similar to a second and long. The Packers will come with almost everybody. Anderson on the draw. This is about as exciting a one-yard gain as you'll find. No place to go. Watch out for the blitz this time. Because if they get him, that'll push him back and almost out of field goal range. Harbaugh's got that jaw working. Inside handoff. Muster. Brian Noble again. He talked about that chin strap move, and this looks like uh, Edgar Bergen's Charlie McCarthy here. Watch this. <laughs> Where's the hand in his back? <laughs> One thing the Bears have got to find out is how to block number 91, Brian Noble, because he's fighting off everything up front, finding where the ball carrier is, and pinning him on his back. Five tackles for Brian Noble, and a little cheerleading. Understandable. Draw play. Nowhere to go. A lot of people may wonder why they went with the draw. Ditka's thinking three points here. If they were to go back and pass and get a sack, that would push them out of field goal range, especially in light of the fact that they're going into the wind with this kick that should come from about 42 yards away. Kevin Butler was one of two last week. One of those, the miss, 57 yards. Had a streak of 24 in a row. This will be from 41 yards out. Boy, right down the pipe. Excellent kick by Butler. So Mike Ditka's team gets something out of the drive. They're on the scoreboard. They still trail by four. 9.33 to go before halftime. Chicago's Kevin Butler with a 42-yard field goal. Green Bay on top. There's Cap Bozo, the second tight end. Ron Cox, rookie, and Mark Carrier, number 20. First-round draft choice. As the Bears get set to kick off. 42-yard, 41-yard field goal officially. As the sun peeks through the clouds here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Chicago lost both games to Green Bay last year. That controversial game here that Dan referred to earlier, 14 to 13 on the fourth and 14 play. And then they won big. That ended a streak of Ditka wins over the Green Bay Packers that had reached eight. As a matter of fact, Chicago 19 and one in September the last five years. And a year ago, of course, they got off to a 4-0 start and then slumped at the finish with a two and 10 mark. Vince Workman gets all out of whack. So the special teams return work for the Green Bay Packers has been a little suspect thus far. Mickey Pruitt down there is a part of the pile. Chicago says they recovered a fumble, but there has been no indication thus. Anthony Dilwig heads on the field. Green Bay has the ball, and time has been called. If you just joined us, we'll bring you up to date graphically on what's happened. The first Chicago turnover, a Harbaugh interception, led to seven Green Bay points. Though the yardage quite even. Keith Woodside has been the offensive story thus far for the Green Bay Packers. 9.24 to go in the first half. Packers stymied by poor field position. Here's Dilwig, five-step drop into the flat for Sterling Sharp, his third catch. And Rivera knocks him out of bounds up around the helmet. He hit the shoulder pad. But Sterling Sharp with three catches in the first half already. Well, Mandrich had a little tough time the last time the Packers had the ball. Here he's working against Armstrong and gets into him nicely the first time, and that's, in, that's the key when you have that type of size. Mandrich hasn't made a whole lot of friends 
in the National Football League in his short time here, but he has made a few dollars, especially for an offensive lineman. It's funny, talking with the Chicago offensive lineman yesterday about this commercial series he did, they all said, we understand, he made a lot of money doing it. No problem. More power to him. Second down and short. Of course, Keith Van Horn of the Chicago Bears did say, you know, it's not enough we don't get much respect or recognition, but now all of a sudden we've got an offensive lineman who talks like Bosworth. And he was speaking of Tony Mandridge. Those commercials are rather humorous, and I, and they, I think they were made in that vein. But uh, that type of thing is going to fire up and add to any rivalry. And, and uh, Ditka, of course, he, he welcomes that because it helps make his job of motivation that much easier. Called them Bozo in the papers. Well, we hope you got a chance to see those one of those commercials that ran in the NFL today. Today, that sounds redundant, doesn't it? Hand off. Whoops, not much there. Whoa! Woodside fumble, scramble. Boy, they're bending fingers back and shoving bamboo shoots behind fingernails and all kinds of things down there. Bears ball. This is really a shame for Woodside because he does make an outstanding effort here bouncing this to the outside. But this is what happens. He loses track of where everybody is. And there are just so many Bears swarming around. It is Mark Carrier that punches this one out. And a Bear has it down there somewhere. Mark Carrier. And here's Mike Singletary, who ultimately was a part of it. So the turnover at the 29, Chicago first down. Neil Anderson, no. Bob Nelson, number 79, and Robert Brown, 93, up on top. Field position is so much a part of the Bears' defensive game plan. We talked about the good kick coverage and the good punting of Maury Buford that they had last week against the Seattle Seahawks. The average position, field position for the Packers taking over the ball so far today has been inside the 20 yard line. And that 20 yard line really is the magical line. Seven to three, seven twenty-eight to go, first half at second down. See if Green Bay is blitzing. This is their normal blitz down, and they're coming, a blitz on the run. Jim Harbaugh said yesterday, we've got to concentrate on second down between six and nine yards. Rams still leading 14 to zip. Big early season game in Detroit. Major disappointment last week on top of Atlanta. Jets lead by 10. What's the plural for run and shoot? <laughs> Ran and shot. <laughs> well, the well, Seahawks the past ran. Tense, yeah. <laughs> that's what the Seahawks ran last week. Run and shoot in the foot. Third and five, seven three, Green Bay leads. Harbaugh for Wendell Davis who has to adjust. He went to the outside and the pass over his right shoulder. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, and Harbaugh really missed one here this time. Not the pass so much, but his decision on who to throw the ball to. He had Neil Anderson single covered on the outside by a linebacker. And I'm sure that's what Dick is saying right now is go through your reads. That's the mismatch that we've got to take advantage of. 42 yard field goal into the wind. Butler hit one from 41 the last time they were down here. Nice job of holding by Mike Tomzak. And it hits the upright. Flag is down. And so's Butler. This is going to cost the Packers running into the kicker or roughing the kicker. I think it's running into, Dan. R running into the kicker. Boy, the Packers get a great break when the ball hits the upright, but the flag will give the Bears a first down inside the 20. I'm not so sure that's a good call. He was just going for the block, and the kicker ran into him, really. Yeah, you got to call it, though. That's what the rule is in there, is to protect the kickers who are so vulnerable. But the effort uh, was clearly to avoid the kicker and try to make the block. 
but that's why they have the two the two rules and here's the uh, the ball hitting the upright wind does a lot of crazy things to that oblong ball well that penalty results in a first down because it was fourth and five and actually the five was a little less than that now Lindy and Fanny and Buddy what he's arguing he's saying that the ball hit the ground on the snap now if that is the case you can go after the kicker because that is almost like a fumble and it did hit the ground I think matter of fact Tom Zach with a good job of getting the ball up and into position So we're back to play after the penalty. First and 10 at the 19. Harbaugh looks right down the middle, finds his receiver inside the 10. Let's see what uh, kind of snap this was. Here's Harbaugh. Check out where that ball comes in. Now that's a no. perfect hold. Our, uh, Tom Zach got it before the ball hit the ground and that's a good call by the officials big question I have now is how is the kicker Keith Butler that's his plant leg that he was injured that he injured on that play will he be able to kick Kevin Butler on the sidelines Harbaugh now three of five first and goal Chicago they trail by four James Rouse the rookie fullback from Arkansas he was a seventh round draft choice who came to the team as a tailback and just a week or so before the cut down to 47 was moved over to fullback behind Brad Mustard. It'll be second and goal at the four yard line. 7-3 with 5-12 to go first half. Hilgenberg up over the ball. Jim Covert left tackle back split eight man front for the Green Bay Packers Harbaugh inside handoff to the two yard line it'll be third and goal there's Kevin Butler on the sideline Blaze Winter hurries on the field defensively for Green Bay, replacing Mark Lee. That's winner number 68. And Tim Harris told us yesterday he started doing this when he was at Memphis State, trying to get the crowd into it. Well, he might have had to try to do that at Memphis State. No trouble getting the crowd into it here in Green Bay. Two tight ends line up tight to the right. This is Bozo, a wide right. Toss to Anderson. Touchdown, Chicago. Tom Thayer with the big block. This is a great combination. When you get blocking like Thayer provided this time, and then the talent and the moves of Neil Anderson as he makes two beautiful moves and then has enough speed to get into the end zone. Bears capitalizing on the turnover, getting six. Tom Thayer with the block on Jerry Holmes, providing the room for Neil Anderson to get in for the touchdown. That's his third of the year. Anderson, who had 101 yards on the ground last week in the win over Seattle. High snap this time. But Tom Zach with the hold, and Butler's kick is good. So denied a score when the field goal hit the upright, but given new life on the penalty, the Bears capitalize and take the lead. Four minutes, nine seconds to go before halftime. The Bears capitalized on two breaks first of all Ron Rivera recovers the Keith Woodside fumble and then on an unsuccessful field goal the Packers guilty of running into the kicker new life for Chicago and Neil Anderson gets the touchdown flag is down the kick is taken by Vince Workman he's out near the 30 yard line should be a procedural penalty of sorts against Chicago so Green Bay in all likelihood will take the return. 
been a relatively calm encounter between these two teams thus far, but Kemper's getting a little afraid. Offside, Green Bay. Mike Ditka was telling us last night that he talks to the first year players and the rookies and tries to explain the emotion in this rivalry, which Mike has been Offside. a part of since the 60s. On the kicking team. The penalty is declined. First down. Take a look at the touchdown. We talked about the Bears having to find a way to block Brian Noble. Here he is from the outside. Cap Bozo comes in and puts the block on Noble. Thayer, number 57, with the kickout block, and then it's all Neil Anderson. And that puts Chicago on top. Anthony Dillwig, 5 of 9 in his second start in a Green Bay uniform. Four man rush, William Perry, flag is down, fumble, two flags. And William Perry bowled over that right side of the line. And Trace Armstrong appears to recover the fumble. Holding. Decline. First down. Well, Dan Hampton likes to refer to the three of them as a tag team, almost like a wrestling type of deal. William Perry is, of course, the fridge. Hampton's Danimal, and there's McMichael, who's Mongo, but this is the fridge all the way, knocking the ball out of Dillwig's hand, and then Armstrong gets in the act with a somersault, somersault with the fumble recovery, and the Bears are in business on the 15. It was Keith Euchre who gave way to William Perry, number 70, and the second turnover inside the 40-yard line, this one at the 15, with 3.54 to go before halftime. High formation for Jim Harbaugh, the toss to Anderson. Boy, James Roush was knocked backwards as he tried to supply a block, and Scott Steven got the tackle. Sellout crowd of 59,000 on hand at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, the 140th meeting between the Packers and the Chicago Bears. 3.35 to go before halftime. Chicago capitalized on a turnover to get their one touchdown thus far. And they've just gotten their second turnover of the quarter. And have a second down and nine. Verlund Christen, Dan Fouts. The Lambeau field. Harbaugh, three of five. And this is that blitz down again, Dan. See what they've got in mind inside the 15. Yep, they're coming. Harbaugh back, little shovel pass. Goes to Neil Anderson, and he's cut down just short of the first down. Well, that's really learning your lessons well for Harbaugh. Seeing nothing down the field, finding out uh, exactly where his check down receiver is. That time it's Anderson. What better check down receiver to have than a guy that can pick up a lot of yards in a hurry for you. But uh, the Bears are really in wonderful shape here, taking advantage of two turnovers. And the Packers have just gone dead in the water. Now, well, Lindy and Bonnie said, we don't have the kind of team that can play with turnovers. We've got to keep it to ourselves. They have it here in the first half. Third and one. Up on top, that's going to be close. James Rouse took the Herschel Walker route up over the top. First and goal. You wonder why Muster isn't in the game. Rouse has been in the last few series, gets the call on third and short there, and he picks up the big first down. See Mark Lee, number 22, the 11-year vet. There is Rouse. Lee urging his defensive teammates on. We are at the two-minute warning. Chicago leads by three, and they're threatening. Report from the Chicago bench is that fullback Brad Muster, number 25, suffering from blurred vision. It's questionable whether or not he will return. And James Rouse has taken his place. Rouse and the Chicago team break the huddle and come to the line on first and goal at the five. And watch Jim Harbaugh walk out the signals. Dennis Gentry, the all-purpose offensive threat in motion. They hand it off to Anderson, who is tripped up at the four. Scott Steven gets credit for the tackle, and the Green Bay Packers have called timeout. 
That's a smart move by the Packers because it is second down now. And they might be able to get the ball back from the uh, Bears regardless of whether the Bears score or not. Heads up play by Lindy and Funny. 1.48 to go, first half. Coming up at halftime, Greg and Terry with scores and highlights. I enjoyed the conversation you and Terry had about the Green Bay quarterbacks in the NFL today. And I wonder if Terry thinks that maybe Don Mikowski will play in the second half. I do. I imagine Terry might answer that. That's 148 away. Right now it's second down and goal. Ron Morris, number 84 in motion. Bears lead it by three. The toss, Anderson. Comes left, Tim Harris forces him inside and then makes the tackle. Third and goal from about two yards out. And the Packers have called another timeout. I believe this is a Green Bay timeout. This is an all-pro confrontation. Nobody blocks Harris and he's one-on-one -on -one with Neil Anderson. Anderson gets as much as he possibly can and Harris makes the tackle. Before the play, look at Tim Harris in the end zone. What was he telling you about the first time he and Neil Anderson played in this rivalry? Well, it was five years ago, and Neil Anderson likes to take a couple of laps around the field. And uh, he didn't know anything about this big number 97, but he turned, looked over his shoulder, and Harris was chasing him around the field in pregame warm-ups. Neil stopped and said, hey, what do you want, big fella? And they got into it right there, and they've been getting into it ever since. But the one thing that Harris did say, and Neil Anderson as well, is that they have mutual respect for each other. In fact, uh, Neil was very happy and pleased that Tim Harris finally got the recognition that he has deserved who made the Pro Bowl last year. But what a guy, that Tim Harris. First down, first touchdown by Chicago came from the fumble, and now it's third and goal from the two. Bozo in motion. Bozo. Roll out. Harbaugh with Bortz in front. Touchdown! There are some Bear fans here. Yeah, and they know one thing, that Harbaugh is not going to throw this ball at all. He had a couple of guys in the end zone there. But uh, he's going to pull it down and use that athletic ability, the dive for the score. And the Pack Packers are down by 10 here. Jim Harbaugh said yesterday, I don't want to quit running. I think I can help the team running three or four times a game. Butler's extra point is good, and Jim Harbaugh gets the touchdown on third and goal from the two to increase the bear lead to 10. This is a dimension that Harbaugh gives Ditka that he likes, is that another running back in the backfield, especially in this situation where there's the option. Here he yells to Bortz, hey, let's go. I've got one. Bortz kicks out. Harbaugh cuts it up for the points. Well, it was a mismatch on that far side, too. Mark Bortz against Mark Lee. Well, in the secondary, they have to stay back and respect Harbaugh's throwing ability because they've got receivers there. And so there's nobody on the corner, and Harbaugh gets in rather easily. Rams leading Tampa Bay 21 to 7. Jim Harbaugh has given the Bears a 10 point lead. The Jets out by 17 in Miami over Buffalo. 13 nothing. We'll have all the scores and highlights. The Cardinals have now scored for the first time in 1990. I wish we'd keep putting up those Miami and Tampa scores because I get warmer when I see them. <laughs> I mean, you said it was 80 degrees here last week. It was. It was wonderful. That must have been summer. Interesting, Dan, what you were telling me before the game, of course, the, the Ice Bowl here in Green Bay in 67, one of the more famous cold weather games, but you played in one that was even colder in Cincinnati. <laughs> And you're still feeling effects from it. Well, I, I did uh, suffer frostbite, but I think <laughs> the uh, bigger effects is that I don't have that ring on my finger. I see. I'd take the ring. That would warm these fingers up a little. Charles Wilson, number 88. Nice run after the 35. The Packers have one timeout left, and Anthony Dillwig comes on. But you must wonder now what, under what circumstance Lindy and Bonnie might call on 
Don Mikowski and see if it might be in the second half. I think this is where we find out, is it really the system of Infani or is it the quarterback in the intangible part of playing quarterback that really comes to light in these type of situations? 127 to go. James Campen over the ball in the shotgun. Into the flat. Oh, boy. Herman Fontenot, who was a holdout this summer and just activated today, is hit by Sean Gale. Listen to the hit by Sean Gale. Well, we'll get to it a little later, perhaps, as the Packers go with no huddle. They'll win. Sidearms it. Caught by Jeff Cleary at the 41. And now a timeout has been called by the Packers. Let's go back to the play prior to this one, Dan, and listen to the pass. That's hard plastic on hard plastic, and right now Anthony Dilwig, besides talking to Lindy and Fani, ought to be uh, getting together with Herman and saying, sorry, brother, that one's a little late. Final timeout used by the Packers now. Green Bay total offense in the first drive after a Jerry Holmes interception, 63 yards, but they have been stymied since. And with one second shy of a minute remaining, they trail by 10. You really wonder about uh, Infani's decision now to use Dilwig to start this game. Uh, had that one nice drive thanks to Keith Woodside, but the spark is missing that Mikowski gives you when he's out on that field, and everybody in this stadium knows it, and I would expect we might start hearing not booze for Dilwig, but perhaps magic for Mikowski. Well, you, you said it's it's hard to me uh, measure the, the intangibles that Don Mikowski gives this team. Signed a million and a half yearly salary just before the first regular season game. Third down and four. Dilwig, Barry Kemp. That's a first down at the 50. They'll go with the no huddle now. They are out of timeouts. Boy, the Bears blitz that time, and Dilwig burned them. Trace Armstrong, the last man back. Down the middle, Jeff Perry at the 33. 35 seconds to go. See if he doesn't try and kill the clock with an incomplete pass now. There it is. And what he also got is he got... Richard Dent offside, snapped the ball before Dent was onside. And this is going to be a free five yards for the Packers. Perry, and I believe he's arguing with James Campen, the center. The one thing that they say about Dilwig is he is very intelligent, and I think we're seeing just what they're talking about. He beat the blitz on the pass to Kemp. Offside, defense. Number 95. Then he hustles his team up to the line of scrimmage, snaps the ball before Richard Dent, number 95, gets back on side. Dent is loafing there, and there's the ball, is snap. That's a legal play of free five yards for Green Bay. Nice job by Dilwig. Very nice job of clock management by Anthony Dilwig. Plus, he got the clock stopped by that penalty, so he really uh, struck the bonus there. 27 seconds to go. They are within Chris Jackie's field goal range now. Jackie hit a 53-yarder last week that could have gone through from 60. Out of the shotgun. Four-man rush. Dilwig. Clarence Weathers out of bounds at the 20. 21 seconds to go. How impressive has this been? Well, remember back when the Bears had the ball, and they were going in for their touchdown. Lindy and Fani was using timeouts, knowing that his pass offense is good enough with the right guy running it. In this case, he's got two good guys running it, Dilwig and Mikowski, but it's good enough to manage the clock with no timeouts. First and 10. With 21 seconds to go in the half. Bears are blitzing. Dillwick is rolling. Incomplete. 17 seconds to go. It's the time for a couple of more plays. And Anthony Dillwick will come over and chat with Wendy and Funny. 
That was a nice job of Dillweg recognizing the blitz, rolling away from it. In fact, the Bears were bringing almost everybody. Donnell Wolford came on the corner blitz. There is Chris Jackie, the second year kicker out of University of Texas at El Paso. You know, it's interesting in the front line of the Packers, they have their second team in there. Mandrich is out, Vinegrad is in, Moran and Hallstrom are in at the guards. Five man rush. Dillway. Oh, and he had Sterling Sharp wide open. At the five yard line. Well, Delway comes out here and he would love to have this one back because Sharp is standing all alone, would have had the grab and may have been able to get in for the six. Now with 12 seconds to go, surprised by this, they're going for the field goal now. Yeah, I am. I think you got plenty of time to get one more playoff, but uh, maybe yeah, Lindy's a little worried about his quarterback throwing one up for grabs. So they go for the 37-yard field goal on third down. Don Bracken will hold. They got three. Well, let me go back to the point about Anthony Dilwick and Don Mikowski since you and I raised it. Might that drive be enough to keep Anthony Dilwick in the game in the second half? I think it has to because what he did is he went down and got points with only one timeout remaining. Uh, did an outstanding job. I think Mikowski knows it as well. Don's going back to the billboard or the uh, clipboard. The one thing, though, you you got to wonder, would Mikowski have hit sharp, though, on that pass? Here the, the youngster comes out. He's rolling out to the left, a very difficult thing for Dillwig to do, and just let that ball sail a little bit. But who knows? That's what's fun about the game is anything can happen, especially when you got two young quarterbacks just learning the game. Uh, Mikowski with a great year last year, but you got to take your hat off to the job that Dillwig has done in one-and-a-half games so far this year. Don Mikowski and Anthony Dillwood said yesterday that Infani notified them on Monday, Monday, after the win over the Rams, that Anthony Dillwood would in all likelihood get the start today. He didn't tell the press. That was really smart by Lindy because as a quarterback, now you know exactly where you stand. Sure, let everybody else speculate about the situation. Let the media pick who they want. Let the fans pick who they want. But darn it, my quarterbacks know exactly where they stand. Good job by a real smart coach, Lindy and Funny. Well, the one thing he did do is give them equal time working with the first unit all week. They both took half the snaps. Here's Jackie. Squib kick. Taken by Johnny Bailey. And he is out of bounds up near the 35-yard line with four seconds to go before halftime. Well, a most impressive drive by the Green Bay Packers pushed back on their heels following the two turnovers. And now down by just seven points. This has really been a good first half. I mean, it's had everything, a couple of turnovers, some uh, good running, some nice passing, and uh, a real hard hitting. Typical Bear Packer ball game. 140th meeting. This should be the final play of the half. Anderson. Out near the 46, and Neil Anderson will wind up with about 28 yards in the first half. The Bears take advantage of two turnovers to take a 17-10 lead. That's the end of the first half with our score. Chicago 17 and Green Bay 10. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Federal Express, the best way to ship it over there.
Those of you who have been watching the action in Green Bay and Detroit, welcome back to our studios in New York, everyone. Along with Terry Bradshaw, I'm Greg Gumbel. Let's run down the scoreboard for you. Beginning with that game at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, the Bears leading the Packers by a score of 17 to 10 at halftime. The last Chicago score, and the one that has them up by a touchdown, Jim Harbaugh rolling out to the right finds an opening and rolls into the end zone for a touchdown. Earlier on the NFL today, you and Dan Fouts arguing about whether or not it should have been Dilweg or Don Mikowski today. Dilweg not getting the job done as well as I'm sure Lindy and Fonty would Hasn't like. Hasn't had as much time, but don't forget he took his team on an opening 63-yard drive, so he has proven well. I just don't think Mikowski can bring the magic back too soon. He hasn't played a game, and I wouldn't count him. I would leave Dilweg in, let him get the experience. He, too, might have that magic in the second half. 17 to 10, Bears at halftime. Meanwhile, they're at halftime in Tampa, where the Bucks are trailing the Rams 28 to 7. Jim Everett has thrown three touchdowns for L.A., and Bobby Humphrey returned an interception 44 yards on the last play of the first half. The Rams lead at 28 to 7. Halftime at the Silver Dome in Detroit, where the Lions lead Atlanta 21 to 7, and the run and shoot outdoing the red gun offense so far this afternoon afternoon and Barry Sanders has uh, just 17 yards rushing or 22 yards rushing in the first half 17 of them here two things you need to be in the run and shoot if you're the only back is speed and power what Sanders gives is the third dimension and that's that elusiveness that's something very seldom you find a back has all three qualities Atlanta is trailing at halftime 21 to 7 meanwhile the New York Jets lead the Cleveland Browns in the second quarter 24 to 7 the Browns Eric Metcalf returned the opening kickoff 98 yards it's been all New York Jets since at halftime in Miami, the Dolphins shutting out the Buffalo Bills 16 to nothing. A couple of Buffalo turnovers have been costly there in the first half. They're at halftime at Indianapolis as well, and now has just moved to the third quarter. The Patriots and the Indianapolis Colts are tied at seven. And at halftime in Philadelphia, the Eagles lead the Phoenix Cardinals by a score of 14 to seven. And the NFL today will continue on CBS after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Subaru. We built our reputation by building a better car. First Brands Corporation, makers of STP oil treatment. And by Michelob Dry Beer, once you experience the bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. Just about set for the start of the third quarter, Chicago up 17 to 10. They took advantage of two turnovers in the second quarter, actually. Two fumbles, uh, recovered one at the 29, one at the 15, not too far to go for TDs. Well, that's really the key in any game, especially one that's going to be as hard fought as this one is. Field position's been a big part of it. And the turnovers in the positive area of the field, and then having your offense go in and score, especially touchdowns, really gives that defense a boost. Let's check it statistically at the halftime break. The turnovers, two for Green Bay, one for Chicago. All have led to touchdowns. 14 points off turnovers for the Bears, seven for Green Bay, and there's what Dan was talking about, that average field position, the Packers 48-yard line, and Green or Chicago, rather, starting on an average at the Green Bay 48, and Green Bay having to start at its own 24. Anthony Dilweg, who engineered that field goal drive with one timeout at the end of the half. I know why Bradshaw likes this guy. He's got that early Terry Bradshaw haircut, doesn't he? <laughs> He's got much more hair on top than the late, later Terry Bradshaw. I tell you, he's doing a heck of a job, too. Dilwig or Bradshaw? Both of them. I knew you'd say you that. You betcha. Very diplomatic. Anthony Dilwig, there's Don Mikowski. Don said, I'm disappointed because of what this game means. He's been warming up, by the way, for most of the second quarter. And here is the kickoff as the Bears will receive to open the second half. Dennis Gentry at the goal line. Nice open field tackle by Mike Weddington, number 52. Jim Harbaugh comes on, four of six, 52 yards. Intercepted on his first pass of the afternoon when he overthrew James Thornton into the arms of Jerry Holmes. A fairly conservative game plan for Chicago again this week. Not a surprise, I guess. Well, especially when you look at Harbaugh's first play, his first pass was picked off. You know Dick is going to go back to conservative. High formation on first down. Anderson, flag is down. 
and Anderson gets by Mark Murphy and is knocked out of bounds at the 25 if the play stands. Holding Chicago, it won't. So that'll be a half a distance call. This is really not the way you want to start your uh, second half. Number 63 of the offense. Well, I have to distance the goal. Still first down. That's Jay Hilgenberg, the center. I go back to that conversation we had with Tom Thayer and Mark Bort said, who's the smartest Hilgenberg? Who's the stupidest Hilgenberg? Who's the best holder on the offensive line? <laughs> Hilgenberg won them all. He's a very popular guy. No doubt that Hilgenberg's the leader of that bunch. Ron Morris in motion. Anderson on a sweep right. Matt Brock, number 62, a former Oregon Duck, as is Dan Fouts, up to make the tackle. Well, and I talked to Matt about his uh, disappointing season last year, and he says it was really his fault, and he felt he let the ball club down, came in as a third-round pick, and really didn't report in the type of shape that he's in now. In fact, he was so worried about not being protected on the 37-man squad that he told the management here of the Packers that if they protect him, he'll buy a house here in Green Bay and he'll work out all year. That's what he's done. Now he's starting at left end. Second down and 14 from the 10. Sweep left. Similar results. This time it's Scott Steven, number 54. And they're dancing in Lambeau Field. The defensive line of the Packers doesn't get a lot of credit because their job is just to control the offensive line and let the linebackers run free. We've seen all the tackles that Brian Noble has made. There he's in on one more with Scott Steven. But that defensive line. They're almost like an offensive line where their job is to free up the people playing behind them. Scott Steven, who replaced John Anderson at that outside linebacker spot. Now Harris lines up at right defensive end on third down and 14. Out of the shotgun, handoff to Gentry. Test the middle, it'll be fourth down as Gentry gets out near the 19-yard line. And the punting unit heads on to the field for the Chicago Bears. Billy R. a plan B acquisition of the New York Giants. <coughs> Green Bay went heavily to plan B a year ago. Did so again this year, but only two plan B players stuck with the team. Some of that water went down the wrong pipe there, didn't it? <laughs> Had that happen to me, and it wasn't water. I hate that. 12.05 to go, third quarter. Here's Buford. Jeff Query at the 45. And the Packers will have good field position at the 50-yard line. A four-yard return of a 35-yard punt. Next Saturday on CBS, baseball for you. And aren't the division races getting suddenly tight? The Pirates will host the Cardinals. Some of you will watch the Red Sox and the Yankees next Saturday at 12 o'clock Eastern. That'll be followed by college football and a chance for America to see Ty Detmer as most of you will see San Diego State against Brigham Young. Others will watch Alabama versus Georgia at 3 o'clock Eastern. How about that Notre Dame-Michigan game last night? Wasn't that fun? Yeah, a couple of good second halves in that game and that BYU comeback. My goodness. First down 10 from the 50. Packers trail 17-10. Dilwig. Play fake. Richard Dent blew through untouched. Yeah, and Dillwig certainly wasn't untouched. Number 95 is Dent. He's one in on the right hand side here, and he comes free. The tight end, Jackie Harris, does not come down and make the block. He's out on his pass pattern, and Dillwig. Big loss of about 10 yards. Saw Rutgers slide to the right side. Obviously not his responsibility. Now, and poor Dilwick, he's got his back to Dent the whole way. He's really exposed there. He's got to learn to hang on that ball a little bit better, though, when he gets contact in the pocket. Out of the shot.
shotgun on second and 20. Settles short for him and Herman Fontenot. And Fontenot fights for yardage up near the 48-yard line before David Tate, number 49, made the tackle. Mark Murphy, one of the heroes of the win over the Rams last week, number 37, with an interception at the five-yard line. Tate, Gale, Stinson, Carrier. They go with a 4-1-6 look. Morrissey, number 51, the only linebacker. Third and 12. They're blitzing. And stunning. And Dillwig, with McMichael right in his face, short arms it to Fontenot. It'll be a punting situation. That's really been the difference in the Bears this year as compared to last year is the pressure that they can get with their front four. And now they bring Morrissey up the middle, so they've got five guys being blocked by five guys, and the pressure by... Armstrong is just enough to uh, cause that incompletion. Don Bracken on the punt, so the Packers waste good field position. And Johnny Bailey, product of Houston Yates High School and Texas a and in Kingsville, Texas. There's Bracken's punt, nice one. At the seven-yard line, Bailey chased out of bounds at the 15. So Jackie Harris with the tackle number 80, a 45-yard punt. And nine on the return. 10.33 to go third quarter. Chicago has the ball for the second time in this half. Jay Hilgenberg, the Pro Bowl center in the middle of that offensive huddle. Just to complete the Hilgenberg saga, we also asked Ports and Thayer <laughs> who worked the officials best. And you know what they said, Jay Hilgenberg. But, Jay, he is the best holder. Now, that doesn't mean he holds a lot. It's just that he, he has so many good techniques. The other guys, Bortz and Thayer, really admire the way he can get away with it. But the referees caught him once today. The other thing that uh, Thayer said about offensive linemen and their lack of recognition is that they are really the bottom of the food chain in the NFL. Not too many statistics that you can point to besides one, wins and losses that where an offensive line will get credit. The Tim Harris guns are out. Harris with one sack today. First down at the 15, a 17-10 Chicago lead. Make it officially the 16-yard line. Across the middle to Ron Morris, a five-yard gain and a flag comes flying way late in the offensive backfield holding Chicago well if this is on Hilgenberg we're going to see a Vesuvius like eruption I don't think it is I think it was on the right side holding offense Number 63. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Oh, oh dear. That, that's what he gets. That's what he gets for going to the officials and uh, trying to plead his case. Here he is, number 63, right in the middle, working against Bob Nelson. See what type of stunt they have. Yeah, that's holding, folks. There's no other doubt, no doubt about that one. But when you uh, talk to the officials, they look at you. They pay more attention to you. That may be the last time Jay goes and talks to a zebra. First down and 18. 17-10, Chicago leads it. Harbaugh with a safety valve pass to Anderson as Harris was coming. And that's a gain to the 11, the tackle made by Mark Lee. This is real nervous time for the Bears because they have started their initial two drives of this second half with penalties holding penalties that have pushed them back inside the 10 yard line see Tom Zach there with the signals well interesting they've got the one man in the civvies sh shading him from a press box view <laughs> I never understood why who they're trying to block the signals from that was kind of interesting I couldn't see a thing maybe they don't want us to know what the play maybe is maybe that's it I used to tell the guy Shaden to get out of the way so I could see the play. Second down and 14. J. 
Gentry out of the backfield to the left. Harbaugh flushed out of the pocket, caught and dropped. Matt Brock. Matt Brock is number 62 at the top of the screen, and he just keeps fighting his way past Keith Van Horn and chases Harbaugh down from behind. That may be the first NFL sack of his career. Broke his hand after about four games last year. Spent a lot of time on the IR, but he's a happy dude. Second sack of Harbaugh today. And they don't get many out of the offensive line. Keep in mind, Harris is a linebacker and the only acknowledged pass rusher. Third and 17. Harbaugh chased by Steven. Goes deep, incomplete. Boy, and right in his face after he throws it out of bounds is Tim Harris working his jaw. And now you'll hear it for the Green Bay Packer defense. You couldn't ask for a better start of the second half if you're a Packer fan. Or a worse start of a second half if you're a Bear fan. Buford has to kick into a win, which has subsided a little bit. But Jeff Query, who has great speed, waits for it at the 50. Who returned five for nearly 15-yard average last week. Nice high punt. Query at the 48 to the 44-yard line as they had a right return set up. 17-10, time has been called with 8.18 to go, quarter number three. Eight minutes, 18 seconds to go, third quarter. Green Bay with good field position at the Chicago 44-yard line has been a complete contrast. Baseball scores, Pittsburgh leading, and the Mets are trailing. The Dodgers out in front of Cincinnati. They're only four and a half back, and San Francisco and Houston scoreless in the first inning of play. First and ten, Green Bay. Quick drop, Perry Kemp. And Perry Kemp with the first down at the 31-yard line. Donnell Wolford with the tackle. And Kemp injured at the 30. Yeah, it looked like he got his head jammed on the uh, down on the grass there. Tackle by Wolford. This is really a well-executed quick hitch for the Packers. Dilwick gets his ball off long before Kemp even turns his head around. The ball is right there. Let's see how he gets hurt. Yeah, well, he got the forehead right on the turf there. This guy, Perry Kemp, he's been the hitee of the year a couple of times in the NFL. Last week against the Rams, he really took a shot from one of the safeties. This time, it's Mother Earth that hits him. Last week, he had six catches. Really kind of a, I don't mean to, to be disparaging when I say nondescript, but he's not a well-known receiver. He just hangs on to his job with Sterling Sharp gathering so much attention at the other wide receiver spot. And, and he's caught 48 balls the last right. two years. He has the knowledge of Lindy's system, was with him in the USFL and with the Cleveland Browns. Well, he's apparently all right. Now, Jeff Query has taken his place, the second-year man from Milliken. He's wide to the right and sharp as split top of your screen. First and 10, Packers at the 31. Another short drop by Delway, and he's hit, gets away, fumble, and Jim Morrissey recovers for the Bears. That's the third turnover for the Green Bay Packers in the second fumble for Dillwig in the game. This is the second fumble he's lost, but he has dropped the ball a couple of other times. One was recovered by Mandrich, and the whistle was blown on the other attempt. Perry should have made that tackle. Probably a good thing he did, because Trace Armstrong came by, knocked the ball away, and Jim Morrissey has the fumble recovery. But Dillwig has to learn that presence. The only way he learns it is through experience. Got to be a little bit disappointed. Well, you're, if you're a lip reader, you know he wasn't happy. First down at the 29. 17-10. Hand off. And he 
Neil Anderson, chased by Johnny Holiday. Biggest play offensively for the Bears today. A gain of 30 yards. All right, this is the left guard, Mark Bortz. Watch him pull and make an outstanding block here for Neil Anderson. Right on Murphy, right in the hole, and now Anderson is into the secondary, and he's close to going all the way. The angle by Johnny Holland is all that saves the Packers that time. 62 yards on 17 carries for Neil Anderson. And the Bears have a first down at the Green Bay 42. Seven and a half to go, third quarter. And Chicago leads it 17 to 10. Whoa! Brian Noble again. Playing an outstanding game. Seven is, tackles for Noble. You know, if you're a baseball player, this is what it feels like to hit a home run. If you're Now he's a linebacker coming through, fighting off his block. Watch the yellow helmet right there, the shoulder, and the tater all the way over the wall here for Noble, fighting off the block up front of Hilgenberg. Second down and eight. Backs are split behind Jim Harbaugh. Play thing. Harbaugh back, goes deep, left side. Ron Morris wide open. Touchdown, Chicago. Jerry Holmes short, Murphy deep. Beat them both. Well, when you're running the ball well, you can run play action pass. Look at Holmes is looking in the backfield. I got to believe Murphy's eyes were in the backfield as well as he's late. This is his responsibility, that half of the field. And that's a beautiful pass by Harbaugh to Morris. And the Bears capitalize again on another Packer turnover. The three Packer fumbles have led the three Chicago touchdowns. This time a 40-yard touchdown pass. Jim Harbaugh to Ron Morris. With 6.32 to go third quarter, the Chicago lead is out to 14 points. With the exception of those few thousand Chicago Bear fans who managed to get tickets, a relatively quiet crowd now as the Bears strike 40 yards out and take a 24 to 10 lead. Here's Vince Workman jumping high for the kickoff and tripped up as he gets near the 30 yard line, a 16 yard return. David Tate with the tackle, number 49. Don Mikowski expected that he might play today, and his team now down 24-10. Anthony Dillwig still in. You get back to Lindy's decision to play Dillwig. He told us yesterday that he feels that players make decisions for coaches by their performance. And Dillwig has had kind of a uh, good and bad performance so far today. Well, the bad part has been two fumbles, have been two fumbles recovered by the Packers. The other fumble was a Woodside fumble. All three fumbles resulting in Chicago Bear touchdowns. The Bears have outscored the Packers 24 to three because of those turnovers. The brighter side of things is that Anthony Dillard is 12 of 19 for 116. And he'll throw on first down. Sterling Sharp over the ball. William Perry supplying pressure. That's Tim Harris getting tape job on the knee. He has about 15 stitches on the outside of that left knee. Uh, a boating mishap earlier in the week out celebrating his birthday party or something like that and uh, ran aground. Randy's boat up onto a sandbar in Green Bay. A little Gilligan's Island in him. <laughs> Second down and 10. 24 to 10, Chicago. Dillwick. That one's dropped by Woodside. Sean Gale and Danelle Wolford. Yeah, things are starting to unravel a little bit for the Packers. Dillwick misses sharp over the middle, and now Woodside drops a sure completion here. Nothing wrong with this pass. 
but uh, Woodside dropped a couple of balls last week and was benched in that second half. So he's having trouble where he usually is uh, outstanding. Third and ten. This is what they call the flush formation. Four wide receivers and Haddix, the running back. Three of those wide receivers to the right side. Stunts by the Bears defense. Nice pass. Oh, Dillweg laid it in to Clarence Weathers at the 50. A 20-yard gain first down. This is such a difficult pass for the quarterback because he has to loft it over linebackers but drop it before the ball gets down to the secondary. There it is over the top there. Sean Gale is a little bit short of getting to that ball, but Clarence Weathers finds the spot in the zone and Dillwig delivers. Weathers a plan B acquisition this year by the Packers. Brent Fullwood in the backfield now. On first and 10 for the 50, Fullwood for the handoff. Gain of a couple. Well, the Packers have just not had any success in the first two weeks of the season running the ball. Their longest run last week was about 31 yards from Vince Workman on a draw play, but they're not getting any consistency at all with uh, Fullwood running the ball or Haddix or anybody else. Woodside had a nice drive to, to start the ball game, but we haven't seen much of him either. Matter of fact, prior to this drive, Dan, the total 46 yards in the ground for Green Bay. Second and seven now. That's Keith Euchre with the bandage around his forehead. Well, he's quicker than I remember. Yeah, that's the old hut hut. Got the fridge that time. Encroachment, number 72 of the defense. Five yard penalty, still second down. You know, we mentioned at the at the beginning of the program that this team used to be called the Decatur Staley's. <laughs> Refrigerator looks like he could have played for the Staley's with that uniform. Those shoes and... I'd like to meet the guy that uh, convinced the Bears that that looks good. Because I got some real estate that uh, <laughs> is on the market. Well, we they're, they're one of two teams wearing the black shoes now. The Eagles are the other. The Eagles voted as a team to wear black shoes. Well, Chicago did not. Well, the... <laughs> Ditka said we're wearing black shoes. Here's Woodside with the 40-yard line, close for the first down. There's the guy that had the vote. Uh, yeah, one of the offensive linemen told us there's only one player that voted on the black shoes, and that player hasn't played for the Bears in about 20 years. <laughs> but, you know, that's black tape, too. That, they used to have to spray paint the, the white tape black, but some enterprising company went out and started making black tape, and they're selling a whole bunch to two, two teams here. Third and one. Bullwood got it. That's a first down at the 38. The Packers do sustain the drive. Well, elsewhere in the league, what's happening? Phoenix is playing at Philadelphia. Let's go back to New York. Here's Greg Gumbel. Well, Vern, the Eagles are getting a pretty tough fight from the Cardinals today. A 14-14 tie snapped right here. Randall Cunningham, two yards to Heath Sherman, and it's 21-14 Eagles. Back to Vernon Dan in Green Bay. All right, Greg, our score 24-10, 3-10 to go, quarter number three. Packers are driving now with a first down at the 33-yard line. Dillway. And West, the big tight end, but a flag is down. That may bring it back. West, who had two touchdown grabs last week. Holding. How about the Rams? Well, they really bounced back from a disappointing game last week here in Lambeau Field, playing in all that heat and humidity. 35 points on Tampa. Holding, number 67, the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That's Billy Yard. One of the four starting offensive guards that Lindy and Fani has. Uh, Rich Moran backs up Ard. Ron Hallstrom backs up Keith Euchre. 
Well, for now at least, because uh, Alstrom and Moran were holdouts this summer, reporting late. And uh, Lindy and Bonnie said, I'm going to give them a chance to earn their starting spots back. But and as a former player, you wonder how much the front office has with that has to do with that decision. Still win. Nice pattern to Perry Kemp. They got some back to the 35-yard line. David Tate makes the tackle, number 49. That's really smart football, getting some of it back. As you said, Vern, they, here they are, first and 20, and they don't try to get it all back in one down. Uh, picking up about 12 or 13 on that play, that uh, brings up a very normal second and seven situation. Harry Kemp with the catch. Kemp has got three for 35 yards now. Sterling Sharp has caught three. It's a 24-10 ball game with 2.15 to go, third quarter. Four wide receivers in for the Green Bay Packers. Four-man rush, stunts by the Bears. Dillweg, one hopper incomplete, fourth down. Third down. Intended for Sterling Sharp. What a start he's had in two years, Sterling Sharp. Three catches today, 90 last year. As a matter of fact, Sharp is off to one of the quickest starts ever for a two-year player. 90 receptions last year after 55 his rookie year. And if you go down the list of the all-time great receivers in the league, he's got more in two years than anybody else ever in their starts. The impressive thing that. is he improves from one touchdown his rookie year to 12 last year. Those are Jerry Rice type of numbers. Third and seven. <laughs> with a lot of room. A lot of room. Mark Carrier. After a gain of 22, makes the tackle. Now watch how all the action goes this way. We got receivers and everything and linemen coming this way. And now Dilwig sees the whole field open up. He steps up into the pocket, and now there is nobody here except an old man on 10 knee operations and a youngster, first-round pick, Mark Carrier, saves the day. But that's the kind of race that I, I would like to have, even with my bad knees, going against Hampton. No way. Gain of 22 and a first down at the 13-yard line. High formation this time. Woodside. of bounds inside the 10 at the 8. Lemuel Stinson and Mark Carrier chased after him. Final minute, quarter number three. Now this is just what the Packers needed to get back in this ball game. That long run from Dilwig really has uh, got him fired up. This will be the 12th play of the drive. Second and four. Second down and four. Play fake. Oh, he had to get rid of it. Flag is down, roughing the passer on Ron Rivera. Rivera was blitzing and got right in the face of Anthony Dillwig. Let's take a look at it, see exactly why Rivera gets called for this. Well, maybe he doesn't get called for it. They're going to call intentional, intentional grounding. grounding. That's the call. Dillwig. Oh, boy. That's a clean hit from Rivera. Nothing wrong with that. Packers been... Uh, the Bears have been very effective blitzing the, the Packers today. And this one really uh, is a fortunate call for the Bears because it appeared that it was going to be rough in the passer. But when you look at it again, there's no way. That was a clean hit from Rivera. It was a clean hit, but did he throw it away, Dan? The closest the action here, and there is nobody outside here. You do have Woodside in the right of your screen, number 33, but they call intentional grounding on Anthony Dillwig. 
Well, you, wonder, part of that. you wonder if that's a veteran quarterback if they make the same call. I doubt it. They look for the shovel pass. It's not there. And if he threw it away before, what do they call this? Well, this is what happened on this play. Watch Mike Singletary. He sniffs it out, and he is going to blast Herman Fontenot. That's the intended receiver right there, and Singletary just levels him, and Dent levels Dilwyn. Johnny will do the kicking. And after that uh, unfortunate series for the Packers, Chris Jackie is on to kick it out of Don Bracken's hole. 37 yards out. They wanted seven. They settled for three, a 37-yard field goal, but that man's team still leads it 24-13. The 22-yard run by Anthony Dilweg sets up a first and goal, but that intentional grounding takes the Green Bay Packers out of field position. They settle for a field goal. They trail 24-13. Tony Mandridge, Keith Euchre, James Campen, number 63. Offensive line, here's the kickoff by Jackie. Through the end zone and out, riding that 20 mile an hour breeze out of the north. Did you notice who was also on that bench with his offensive lineman? Anthony Dilwick. Yes. about Dillwig is, is he's been counted out a couple of times today but he keeps coming up with good drives and making the big play what that tells me about this young man is he likes to compete so does Don Mikowski who continues to warm up in hopes of checking out the clock wondering when he's going to get in the game if ever first and 10 Chicago leading 24-13 Final 19 seconds of the third quarter. Toss to Neil Anderson. Well, this Green Bay defense has done a good job. They've given up only two big plays today, a 30-yard run by Anderson and a 40-yard pass. Other than that, Packer defense has played well. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. The Green Bay Packers 13, the Chicago Bears 24. Our coverage continues after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We begin the fourth quarter from Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Chicago out on top, 24-13. They have the football first and 10 at their own 20. Vern Lundquist with Dan Fouts. Second week of the 1990 season. Second down and 10 from the 20. Jim Harbaugh has gone the distance at quarterback. Dennis Gentry out of the backfield. Pressure coming. Gentry makes the catch. Tiger Green rides it out of bounds, and that's good enough for a first down. Well, if you just tuned in, let's bring you up to date on how the scores have evolved. Woodside from 10 yards out. That followed a Jerry Holmes interception of a Harbaugh pass. Green Bay on top by seven. Then the Bears came back. And we'll update you in just a second. First and 10 from the 31. Harbaugh now 7 of 10 for 106 yards. Drills it to Gentry. That's a gain of 9 to the 39 in front of Jerry Holmes. And brings up a second down and 1. The Bears are playing very efficient football right now. Last week, Harbaugh was 70, over 70%. He's over 70% right now. And, and the plan is good. It's very conservative, and yet they're getting the right mismatches. They're getting Gentry out there against the safety. They're using his skills, and Harbaugh is delivering. Second down and two. Brad Buster has checked back into the lineup. Out since early in the game with blurred vision. Ron Morris in motion. Anderson, no, Brian Noble again. What a big day he's had. Now 
bring you up to date again. 7-0 on Woodside's run. That was the first score of the game halfway through quarter number one. Bears got a Butler field goal from 41 yards out to make it 7-3 in the second quarter. And then the fumbles led to two touchdowns. Anderson scored from a yard out to make it 10-7. Following a fumble recovery at the 15, Harbaugh scored from two out. That gave them a 10-point lead. Jackie's field goal with eight seconds left in the half made it 17-10 at halftime. And in the third quarter, Morris caught a 40-yard toss from Harbaugh. That followed, by the way, another fumble recovery. And Chris Jackie's 37-yard field goal at the end of the quarter narrowed the margin to 24-13, and that's where we stand right now. Tony Mandridge and Don Mikowski, there's a couple of million a year, 2.5 million a year. Yeah, and only one, is, one million is working today. There's a million and a half sitting and waiting. Third and inches. Harbaugh, that should be enough for a Chicago first down. Mike Tomzak once again. Whispers in Dennis Gentry. This time they ran the play in. Well, what Gentry gives the Packers is a lot of versatility because he can line up as a running back and be very happy there. Or he can go out as a wide receiver. And this is probably the happiest Dennis has been in a while because he really likes that role. Seems that every time he's on the field, something significant happens. I saw that Phoenix is coming back. First and 10, Chicago. They lead by 11. Left side, Gentry. Mark Murphy and Johnny Holland knock him out of bounds, but yet once again he makes the big play. This time a gain of 23. Well, he just continues to make big plays, as you said, Vern. Here is the all-out blitz. Single covered on the outside. Jerry Holmes will come up, slip down, and now Gentry is in the secondary. And watch the end of this play as he delivers a blow here to Mark Murphy, a la Walter Payton. 23-yard gain, first down, Chicago with 12.04 to go. They lead it by 11, Brian Noble and his Green Bay Packer defensive teammates trying to thwart the Chicago drive. Muster. Tim Harris makes the tackle. Buster, who sat out most of the second and third quarters. Problem with his vision, obviously it's cleared up. And once again, they're shading the uh, the view of Mike Tomczak. From who? The guys in the press box? Well, actually, they're trying to keep the Packer players that are on the field from looking over there and getting a, a clue. Sometimes they, they'll make a signal like pointing straight up in the air. That might mean one of the receivers is gonna go on an up route. Second and nine, 24-13, Chicago. Harbaugh. Yeah. Out of bounds at the 30, chased there by Scott Steven, number 54. You know, Vern, the, the line of scrimmage, the neutral zone is the length of the football. You see how Hilgenberg tilts the ball up. He shortens that space. Again, the running ability of Harbaugh buys some time and picks up some yardage along the sideline there. The problem here is, though, he goes out of bounds, and, and it may be a beat. it's too early to start talking about managing the clock, but in a game like this, every second counts. This is a significant play in this ballgame. Third and five from the 30. Neil Anderson first down, Chicago. Now James Thornton runs the play in. This is a well-designed play. From the outside, you're going to see Wendell Davis come and make the block that will spring Anderson free for the first down. Right here comes Davis. Bang, there's the block, there's the first down. 
that gain is good to the 20. 24, 13, 9, 40 remaining in the ball game. Anderson. They are pulled and led to the left. And Neil Anderson is down at the 16-yard line before Bob Nelson makes the tackle. He had 20 rushes last week for over 100 yards. These yards he's earning today are well-earned. They're tough. He's up to 71 today on 21 carries. 1,200 yards in the 1989 season. And they're working on the clock. It's now down to nine minutes remaining. Chicago got off to a 4-0 start last year. Trying to go 2-0 today. Play fake. Homer Scott Steven. Touchdown! Neil Anderson from Jim Harbaugh. A gain of 16 and the TD. can't say enough about the job Harbaugh is doing today. This ball is perfectly thrown right over the linebacker's head, right in the hole in the secondary. Again, Murphy's late coming over on the coverage, and Harbaugh's got another touchdown pass. That's just a beautiful throw, though. He knows that the linebacker won't be able to make the play because he's got his back turned to the quarterback. Butler's extra point is good. Chicago may have salted the victory. 8.40 remaining. And Jim Harbaugh's touchdown toss has given them an 18-point lead. Bring you up to date on what's happened. Chicago with 21 points off those three Green Bay turnovers. All fumbles. Neil Anderson has scored twice today. But the Bears defensive line playing so well against Seattle last week. They have played again in an exemplary fashion. 31-13, 8.40 to go. A case of Packer mistakes so far? Or? Well, they've had all those turnovers, and then each time they seem to be uh, in a position to score, they have a mistake, whether it's a fumble or an ill-timed penalty. But the Bear defense have really controlled this ball game, and the heart and soul of that Bear defense is that defensive line. Now Kevin Butler is on to kick off again. Wilson and he's out near the 30-yard line flag is down no flag the uh, possibility of a fumble but they said it was recovered by Green Bay don't forget double header today most of you will see the Redskins against the 49ers in game two others will watch the Giants against Dallas and still others will see New Orleans at Minnesota as we present doubleheader action for you, week two of the 1990 CBS NFL season. Anthony Dilwick stays in at quarterback. The team trailing 31-13 now. Chicago up by 18 points. That pass caught at the 39-yard line by... Clarence Weathers. Nope. Trapped it. And as Dilwig went out to the huddle to begin this series, Fern, uh, there were more than just a few people that were disappointed. And then the loyal Packer people uh, all cheered. No notice how this ball goes through Weathers and hits the ground. But at this point in the game, you're down by 18. You only got eight and a half minutes to go. This wouldn't be a bad time to give Mikowski some uh, playing time to get him ready. This could be Mikowski's training camp, uh -huh. preseason games. Don Mikowski has not played in a competitive situation this year. Here's Anthony Dilwig, nailed. Richard Dent with his second sack today, and that's six for the afternoon. Six fair sacks. The one thing they haven't done with Dent today is move him around much. They must like this, the matchup with uh, Rutgers there. Obviously, Rutgers was not up to it that time. Dent just tossed him aside and then drilled Dilwig. 
third and 19. Deep in the middle, picked off. Intercepted by Mark Carrier. The first round draft choice out of Southern California. Fascinating young man in that he agreed to a contract before the actual draft was held. And he carries on that tradition of great safeties from USC. But this is playing center field, just watching the quarterback's eyes, looking for that overthrown pass and making the interception. Mark Carrier follows in a grand tradition at Southern Cal. Ronnie Lott, Joey Browner, Dennis Smith, Tim McDonald, and Carrier. Matter of fact, he said he became good friends with Dennis Smith and Ronnie Lott, and they gave him a lot of advice, not only about his career at USC, but also the NFL. Mark Green and James Rouse are the running backs now, and Mike Tomzak is in at quarterback. That pass behind James Rouse, so... While Don Mikowski continues to prowl the Green Bay sideline, the backup in Chicago has gotten in the game. Mike Tomzak is in. You wonder how much more punishment uh, Lindy and Fani wants to subject poor Anthony Dilwig to six sacks today. And you wonder also just how anxious Mikowski is to get into that fray. Okay. Dan Hampton says, come on, leave me alone. Second down, and 10. Tomzak, draw play to Rouse. Dan, you had a chance uh, about an hour before the game to talk to Dan Hampton, who, as we said, is playing with 10 knee operations. And well, he was distressed by the comments by Bill Walsh last week. Well, and the thing that, I, how I can relate to Dan Hampton, of course, I played in the league for 15 years, and I've had a number of knee operations myself, but you never want to give up the game, no matter what you've been through. If you feel healthy enough to get out on that field and perform the, enough to make yourself proud, then you're going to do it regardless of what condition you're in. And that's, when you leave this game, baby, it's over, and Dan Hampton knows that. He doesn't want to leave it just yet. Third and eight. Incomplete, intended on the left side for Mark Green. Well, we had a chance to talk with Mike Ditka yesterday about the Dan Hampton circumstance, and Mike said, you know, at some point, loyalty's a two-way street. And Mike said, I feel a loyalty to Dan Hampton for what he's meant to this team. And if I can help him prolong his career, I want to do it. Now here's Don Mikowski, who apparently will get in after a helmet hit from Tim Harris. Well, he says he hasn't been hit all year. He can't wait to, to have his first hit. <laughs> and it comes from Harris. <laughs> from his own guy. Maury Buford. Well, he's not going to have great field position to start, that's for sure. How about the four-yard line? That's what they call the coffin corner kick. And if you listen closely enough, you'll hear the nails going into that coffin. Neil Anderson with 71 yards and two touchdowns today. One on the ground. What a catch. And here comes Mikowski. The roars you hear in the background as time has been called. Don Mikowski in his fourth year in for the first time in 1990. Ended a lengthy holdout just a week before the season started. Signed a one-year contract for a million and a half. Said, I'm ready. I've taken 50% of the snaps. But Dan, as you said, he wants to take that first hit and really get into the ballgame. He, he may have his wish. <laughs> times left the Packers from behind a year ago hit from behind that is a forward pass Dale Hamer indicating right away that Mikowski had been coming forward and Richard Kent will argue the case now yeah Dent got around Rutgers as if he wasn't even there and just tipped the ball at the last second as Mikowski was bringing it forward take a look at it number 95 right here on Ken Rutgers he gets underneath them. I'm not so sure that's not a fumble. 
His arm was up, but it was not coming forward. The ball came straight up in the air. But they're going to call oh. it an incomplete pass. That could be arguable, couldn't it? Well, I think they're arguing it about, about it in the booth next door. They will check the replay right now. Jack Fetty again is the replay official. Somewhere back in there. This is so close because uh, where is the ball? It was still going back. I got to believe that's a fumble. Now, who recovers this ball? Precisely. Armstrong, There's Armstrong it. with it, but that squeezes out of there like a greased pig. That is Rutgers, so that would be a safety if this play is overturned. That's clearly a fumble. The ball was not moving forward. Well, I'm 0 for 1. <laughs> well, we didn't hear Dale Hamer. He made an announcement, obviously, which indicated that the play would not be overturned. So it's second down and 10. Here's Mikowski. Sterling Sharp drops the ball. And manages a wry grin. Nice job of Mikowski here. He looks good as he steps up in the pocket. Nice bounce, good rhythm, and there's the fastball right in the hands, and Sharp just flat drops it. Don said he had a satellite dish at his parents' home near Buffalo, so he managed to watch most of the preseason games while he was holding out. Didn't like it when they kept talking about his absence. He said it sounded like he died. From the end zone, Dent coming. Sterling Sharp catches this one. That's a first down at the 22. Well, you don't catch 145 balls from a one quarterback in two years without some type of communication. Obviously, Mikowski and Sharp are on the same page. First down and 10 at the 22. 31-13 ball game. Clarence Weathers leaps up to make this grab. But you know one thing they got to do is they can't afford to go back in the huddle anymore. They've got to get to the line of scrimmage and go into their hurry up offense as it appears they're doing. Trailing by 18, Mikowski said the most memorable victory. Get to it in a second. Here he comes near side. That's caught by Jeff Burry. The most memorable come from behind victory of the five last year was early in the season when they trailed the Saints by 21 and a half and came back and won it. Well, this one will top that if he can pull <laughs> off some magic. Going to be a lot of magic, though. 5.35 to go. 31-13. Donnell Wolford was coming with the quarterback blitz and deflected the ball. You know, Vern, my, back around my second year in the league, our backup quarterback in San Diego was Bobby Douglas, who used to play for the Bears, as all Bear fans remember, I'm yes. sure. And I had led the Chargers to about a 30-point deficit. <laughs> We're on the short end with about two minutes to go, and Tommy Prothrow, our coach, told Bobby, go on in there. And Douglas looked at him. He said, well, do you want me to win it outright or just tie it up? <laughs> I hope Bobby's watching. Did he run or throw? He did it all. Yeah. Bukowski. Fontenot. Fumble. But the Packers will maintain possession. And that stops the clock with 5.21 to go. I think the Bears want to do now is, is let the Packers complete passes and move the ball down the field, but keep them in bounds. Let that clock run down. Let that clock run out. That was the sixth the Green Bay fumble today. Six times it's been on the ground. They've lost three of them. Third down and four at 5.07 to go. Jeff Curry to the 34-yard line. 
Tackle made by Ron Cox. First final of the day. The Rams win big, 35-14. They're one and one. Query with a 23-yard catch. Mikowski. Hey, he doesn't look rusty, does he? No, he doesn't. One of the things, though, going in his favor is he's going up against a defense that really isn't putting much pressure on him. Right. At least not the pressure that the Bears put on Dilwig. More of a contained type of situation for the Bears. In fact, the Bears have Washington and Ryan in on that defensive line. This time it's Weathers to the 19-yard line. And, of course, they're fighting the clock, which is now down to 4-0-4 in the ballgame. He's got to start throwing the ball in the end zone. He's got to get a score here within the next minute. Mikowski is 7 of 10 in this drive. Weathers catches another one. That's down at the 12 yard line. Well, it is exciting if deceptive. Well, what it is, now yeah, Mikowski calls timeout. He's probably a little winded from throwing all these plays. Now, listen to the stands. has been called three minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the ball game Packers facing an 18 point deficit they have driven from their own four yard line however to a first down at the 12 yard line this will be the 11th play of the drive which has consumed three minutes and 11 seconds thus far and that's too much time Mikowski 8 of 11 for the 84 yards First down at 12. Intercepted. Touchback. Intercepted. Touchback. John Gale. No, Lemuel Stinson. Well, the soothsayer, the predictor, Lemuel Stinson. Working on Clarence Weathers, man to man. Here is Tate. He turns him loose in the zone, but this is a forced play here by Mikowski. Great break on the ball by Stinson, and it almost appeared that he was the intended receiver. But he said he'd get one, and he did. And that gives him two for the year. Ports the Mikowski drive. First down and 10 at the 20, backs in the eye. Bears will work on the clock. Mark Green, number 31, second year man from Notre Dame. Next up for Chicago, a game at home against the Minnesota Vikings, and then they go out to the West Coast to take on the Los Angeles Raiders. Green Bay will be at home against Kansas City next week before they go on the road for a while. And in just uh, three weeks, Vern, these two teams will get back together at Soldier Field, and I got a feeling that Mike Ditka may be uh, seeing a new starting quarterback on the other side of the field in this man, Don Mikowski. First game of our doubleheader, and most of you will see Washington San Francisco game two. Dilwig is going to be an outstanding quarterback in this league, I believe, and, and he has done an outstanding job so far. But there's just something about Mikowski. Uh, everybody feels it when he goes in the game. There's an electricity that he provides for the Packer offense, and he got some good work in on that last drive. 18 point Chicago lead, 324 to go. Second and four. Johnny Bailey out to the 35-yard line. Drafted in the ninth round. The knock was too small. Mike Ditka said yesterday he's got some moves that remind me of Gale Sayers. And you wonder when the knock too small is going to be forgotten. Because if you look at guys like Barry Sanders, and, and there's a number of backs around the league, 
that are about five foot eight, five foot nine, but what they have is great balance. They're well built. 180 pounds on a five foot eight frame, that's a lot. Bailey's got some strength, and you know, he gained a whole bunch of yards, more yardage than anybody else in college football has ever done at Texas A&I, and although it's a small school, as Ditka says, they didn't do it with mirrors down there. They were tr people trying to tackle them. Anthony Dillwig, I believe that was Chuck Cecil he was chatting with. It is. Chuck placed on injured reserve yesterday, the starting free safety of the Green Bay Packers, bothered by a hamstring, so he'll be down for a month. Jackie and Bracken talk with Dillwick. Uh, they're telling him, good job. You did a heck of a job out there. And listen, uh, don't worry about it. Don't get your old dauber down. But you can notice they're both kickers. <laughs> Is that what happens when you're down late, you, you don't see any of the big offensive linemen or anybody else. Or especially nobody from the defense. All they know is that they're losing by 18. Kickers have no idea what the score is. Packers are down by 18 points, and they are out of timeouts. Green and Rouse in the backfield now. James Rouse out to the 40-yard line, and that'll bring up the second down. I knew one thing. If I was standing on the sidelines and my team was behind by 18 points, and the only people talking to me were two kickers, I was in real trouble. <laughs> now the kickers have moved away. There's Blair Keel, though. He'll offer some consolation as well. But the Bear defensive line, there's the story today. All those sacks on poor Dilwick. A lot of pressure, opens up a lot of turnovers for the defense. Six sacks by the Chicago Bears. Second and five. Johnny Bailey again after the 45. And that's going to be enough for another first down. Phoenix has come from behind and leads Philadelphia. How about that? You wonder if that's a case of the Eagles playing down to their competition. The Cardinals were terrible last week against the Redskins, and here the Eagles, uh, everybody thought they'd walk all over Phoenix. Not so. See the Bears emulating Tim Harris with a derisive tint to their gestures. Two-minute warning, 31-13. Chicago leads it. We've got 120 seconds to play. Back in Lambeau Field in Chicago for the final two minutes of the game. Bears will win it. They lead at 31-13 right now. Just an interesting footnote to this game. In his ninth year now as head coach of the Chicago Bears, no opposing coach has ever defeated Mike Ditka three times in a row. Lindy Infante had a chance. It's not going to happen. No coach ever. Three wins in succession over Mike Ditka coach team. Infante's... Green Bay Packers had won the last two. Here's Mark Green. He's knocked down at the 46. Again, the Packers cannot stop the clock, so it will continue to unravel. Chicago will equal their start of last year. They go off to a 2-0 stop start. Green Bay falls to 1-1. One and, one. and I think that the advantage that the Bears have this year is they're more prepared for injuries than they were last year. A lot of their youngsters, their first and second year guys have matured, and plus they've also given, been given a lot of playing time throughout the preseason, last week against Seattle, and we've seen a lot of substitutions today by the Bear defense. So they're ready in case any injuries may happen on long. Final run. score, the Cardinals knock off Philadelphia. Joe Bugle gets his first win, and the Eagles fall to 0-2. Don't think they miss Keith Jackson much, do you? Johnny Bailey with another carry. Well, I'd like to see uh, Bailey in the open field because uh, whenever you're compared to a player like Gail Sayers, that is saying quite a bit. Uh, nobody in my mind has ever been a better open field runner than Gail Sayers. And, and Ditka says that uh, some of the moves that Bailey has remind him a lot. And of course, uh, Ditka played with Gail. I'm glad to hear you say that. I think I think Gail Sayers may be the best I've ever seen. Open field cuts. I grew up as a 49er fan, and he made the Hall of Fame playing against the 49ers. I remember the game. Final 25 seconds of the ball game. What was it? Six touchdowns one time. 
So the Chicago Bears will win it. They convert three fumbles into touchdowns. They get a conservative game plan, but an effective performance from Jim Harbaugh, who winds up 11 of 14 for 161. And Mike Ditka's team has defeated the Green Bay Packers by a 31 to 13 count. So for Dan Fouts, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Lambeau Field. Our final score, 31-13 Chicago. Stay tuned for the second game of our NFL doubleheader on CBS. Most of you will see the Redskins and the 49ers. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS.